brothers and sisters. Hope you all having a wonderful day. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church Law Class. I'm your brother, Kasafo. And I'm your brother, Zakwa. Hope you all are enjoying the day. Today, we're going to get into a good discussion about the nations and their rulers. This is going to help us understand the commandments as we go forward. Can we start off in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, please? But though there be that are called Elohim, whether in heaven or in earth, that there be Elohim's many and Lord's many, but to us there is but one Elohim, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Yahweh Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. All right, so let's learn about the Father. And these others that are called Allahim and Lords. Can you read Sirach chapter 1 verse 8 please? There is one wise and greatly to be feared. The Lord sitting upon his throne. This is the Holy Father. Enoch, he saw his throne and his glory. Can you read Enoch chapter 14 verse 15 to 23 please? And I beheld a vision and lo. There was a second house greater than the former, and the entire portal stood open before me, and it was built of flames of fire. And in every respect, it was so excelled in splendor and magnificence and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendor and its extent. And its floor was of fire, and above it were lightnings, and the path of the stars and its ceiling also with flame and fire. And I looked and saw therein a lofty throne. Its appearance was as crystal, and the wheels thereof as the shining sun, and there was the vision of cherubim. And from underneath the throne came streams of flame and fire, so that I could not look thereon. And the great glory set thereon, and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun, it was whiter than any snow. None of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory, and no flesh could behold him. The flame and fire was round about him, and a great fire stood before him, and none around could draw nigh him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, yet he needed no counselor. And the most holy ones who were nigh to him did not leave by night nor depart from him. All right. These testimonies are sure by evidence of them in the scriptures as well. Can you read Psalms 89 and 7, please? Allah, yes, definitely. Allah is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all of them that are about him. And we understand now that there are millions before him that reverence and fear him from what Enoch saw. Now, let's understand why he is feared to see he's powerful in strength. Can you read Testament of Levi, chapter 3, verse 4 to 9, please? And in the highest of all dwelleth the great glory, far above all holiness. This is the seventh heaven where the great glory, Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, dwells above all holiness, right? And the heaven next to it are the archangels who minister and make propitiation to the Lord for all the sins of ignorance of the righteous, offering to the Lord a sweet smell and savor, a reasonable and bloodless offering. And in the heaven below, this are the angels who bear answers to the angels of the presence of the Lord. And in the heaven next to this are thrones and dominions, in which always they offer praise to Allah. When therefore the Lord looketh upon us, all of us are shaken. Yea, the heavens and the earth and the abysses are shaken at the presence of his majesty. His movement shakes the whole creation. Hence, he is greatly to be feared by the holy angels and the devils understand and fear him also. Can you read James chapter 2 verse 19, please? Thou believest that there is one Elohim. Thou doest well. 
the devils also believe and tremble. So you can see that the devils, though they go astray, they believe and know the truth and fear. Unfortunately, it's just the sons of men who are unaware of these facts. Can you read Testament of Levi, chapter 3, verse 10, please? But the sons of men, having no perception of these things, sin and provoke the Most High. Now, the sons of men were divided into nations, and not all chose to fear the Most High Allah, not having perception of his greatness to turn from sin. There were 70 nations, excluding the Hebrews in the division of the whole earth at the time of the Tower of Babel, and the rulers who are placed over the nations are angels who taught them their languages. Let's take a look at that. In Jasher chapter 9, verse 32, please. And Elohim said to the 70 angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. That's the same event of Genesis 11 and 7. All right, let's see what else happened in the appendix of Naphtali, chapter 8, verse 4 to 6, please. For at that time the Lord, blessed be he, came down from his highest heavens and brought down with him 70 ministering angels, Michael at their head. He commanded them to teach the 70 families which sprang from the loins of Noah 70 languages. Forthwith the angels descended and did according to the command of their creator. But the holy language, the Hebrew language, remained only in the house of Shem and Eber, and in the house of Abraham, our father, who was one of their descendants. All right. Let's see what else transpired on that day. It's a penance of Naphtali chapter 9, verse 1 to 5, and then chapter 10, verse 1, please. Okay. Uh, Penis and Naphtali, chapter 9, verse 1. And on that day, Michael took a message from the Lord and said to the 70 nations, to each nation separately, You know the rebellion you undertook and the treacherous confederacies into which you entered against the Lord of heaven and earth. And now choose today whom you will worship and who shall be your intercessor in the height of heaven. Nimrod the wicked answered and said, For me there is none greater than he who taught me and my people in one hour the language of Cush. And the light manner also answered Put, and Mitzrayim, and Tubal, and Javan, and Meshach, and Tyrus. And every nation chose its own angel, and none of them mentioned the name of the Lord. Blessed be he. But when Michael said unto Abraham my father, Abraham, whom doest thou choose, and whom wilt thou worship? Abraham answered, I choose and select only him who said, and the world was created, who formed me in the womb of my mother, body within body, who placed in me spirit and soul, him I choose, and to him I will cleave. I am my seed all the days of the world. Uh, chapter 10, verse 1 of the Appendix of Naphtali. Then the Most High dispersed the nations and apportioned and allotted to every nation its share and lot. So there you have, as it said here, every nation chose its own angels. So the 70 families that sprang from the Lord of Noah chose their own angel for them to worship and serve. Whereas Abraham chose the creator that created the world and him. Thus you have the 70 nations all had rulers over them, while Shem, Eber, and Abraham were under the Lord. Each nation is in the Lord's hand, though, and can choose to worship him, just like Ruth the Moabitess. Can you read Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, please? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. There we see, even as Abraham, 
Anyone who fears Allah and works righteousness is accepted of him. So touching on Abraham, the house of Abraham, a quick understanding for the house of Abraham. Though he has many children by blood, yet not all are counted for his house. Can you read Jubilees chapter 16, verse 16, please? And we returned in the seventh month and found Sarah with child before us when we blessed him. And we announced to him all the things which had been decreed concerning him, that he should not die till he should beget six sons more and should see them before he died. But that in Isaac should his name and seed be called so Abraham had Ishmael, Isaac, and Keturah's children, known as the children of the East. Yet in Isaac is his name called. So Isaac is a Hebrew. And though the other sons are his children, they are the Arab race, whose homeland is in all of Arabia. Can you read Jubilees chapter 20, verse 12 and 13, please? And Ishmael and his sons... And the sons of Keturah and their sons went together and dwelt from Paran to the entering in of Babylon and all the land which is toward the east facing the desert. And these mingled with each other, and their name was called Arabs and Ishmaelites. All right. All right. Can you continue to verse 17 so we can see the division of the nations compared with Isaac the Hebrew, please. And that all the seed of his sons should be Gentiles and be reckoned with the Gentiles. But from the sons of Isaac, one should become an holy seed and should not be reckoned among the Gentiles. For he should become the portion of the Most High. And all his seed had fallen into the possession of Elohim, that it should be unto Ahia, a people for his possession above all nations, and that it should become a kingdom and priests and a holy nation. And there you have the children of Abraham and the children of Isaac. You have the Arabs and Ishmaelites and the children of Esau. They are all reckoned with the Gentiles. But the one nation, the children of Israel, they are separated and a nation above the true Israelites, that is. So the Hebrew race is the house of Abraham. Of the posterity of Abraham, the Hebrew, you have three new nations that arose. One is the Arabs, which are comprised of the children of Ishmael and the sons of Keturah. And then you have the Edomites, that's the Caucasian men and their posterity. And then you have the Israelites, which are the children of the Bantu slaves with the native and aboriginal slaves of the Pacific Islands and the Americas. Though the Israelites are these specific people, today they're scattered into the four corners of the earth. So of those three nations, only the Israelites are accounted for the house by blood, being the Lord's people and considered Hebrews, while the rest of Abraham's children are reckoned amongst the Gentiles. Can you read Jubilees chapter 15, verse 30 to 32, please? But Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau Ahiah did not cause to approach him, and he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his. And over all hath he placed spirits and authority to lead them astray from him. But over Israel he did not appoint any angel or spirit, for he alone is their ruler, and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his angels and his, and his spirits, and at the hand of all his powers, in order that he may preserve them and bless them, and that they may be his, and he may be theirs from henceforth forever. See through scripture that there are angelic rulers over the nations and spirits, and powers that Allah Hayyam, he's going to require his people of all nations at their hands. The scriptures confirm that there are angelic rulers over the nations. Can you read Sirach chapter 17, verse 17, please? 
For in a division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people, but Israel is the highest portion. Since these other spirits over the nations are angels that lead the nations astray, they are idols, not to be followed or worshipped as they lead to disobedience. Can you read 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 26, and then verse 25, please? 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 26. For all the Alahims of the people are idols, but Ahiah made the heavens. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 25. For great is Ahia, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all Alahims. He made the heavens, so he is to be feared above all. Ahia is sincere about not putting any other Alahims before him, and knowing the other lords lead the nations, he wants us not to learn their ways. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, please? Thus saith Ahiah, learn not the way of the heathen. Let's stay in the way of Ahiah, obeying his voice, not learning the way of the heathen, because they follow after other spirits that lead them astray from the Most High. Can you read Colossians chapter 2, verse 18 to 19, please? Let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increased with the increase of Elohim. So we have to be mindful not to be beguiled of our reward in serving Ahayah Elohim and the one Lord, Yahshua Christ, being misled to submitting ourselves or, or serving, worshiping angels. So let's be mindful not to be beguiled from our reward of serving Ahayah Elohim and the one Lord, Yahshua Christ, through the simplicity of obeying his voice and doing what he says to do in his commandments that he's made plain for us. What doesn't it say in the scripture the the things that are plainly seen or what he's given us in his law. Mm -hmm. So he's made it easy for us, whereas there are others who are intruding into things which they have not seen being puffed up, speaking on things, spiritual things specifically, that they don't understand. But Ahai has given us the spiritual understanding we need in his law, as we know the law is spiritual, to keep us from all the attacks of the enemy, as we've discussed in prior lessons. We really have to be aware of this. The Apostle Paul admonished on not getting involved in things that are outside of Allah. Can you read Colossians 2 verse 8, please? Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Notice, the philosophy and vain deceit comes from the tradition of men and rudiments of the world. Is not the doctrine of Allah Hayyam. It's not through the law and the testimonies. So we can know to differentiate for ourselves, to stay in that simplicity of the law and the testimonies. Because in these end times, there are, what does it say? Seducing spirits and doctrines and devils that Paul prophesied of, specifically to come in these times. Can you read Colossians 2, verse 20 to 23, please? Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using. After the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So we have to be mindful if we're truly dead with Christ, why are we living in the world and his rudiments partaking in the practices of the world 
that are actually the worship of angels and other spirits. And the things seem righteous. They seem to have a show of wisdom and humility, but they're after the commandments and doctrine of men. We have to be on guard against these things. Now, we all come from these things. Did you have anything else on that, Zachbar? No, you can go ahead. We all come from these things, and we were once enemies in our minds following idols. But he has reconciled us to do good works by obeying his voice. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, please? You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So even Paul is calling the Gentiles themselves. They were Gentiles carried away onto dumb idols as being led because Allah high and placed spirits of authority over the nations to lead them astray. But now through faith in Yache, they become children of Abraham through faith. And they're no longer Gentiles, but they're accounted for the seed through Christ, for the seed of faith for Abraham by faith. Can you read uh, Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 3, please? And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So you can see, knowing that Ahaya is the great Alahayim to be feared, and that there are others that are called Alahayim and lords, these are these dumb idols that lead us astray from Alahayim, cause us to be in trespass and sins. And when we walk according to their ways, we're in the course of the world, following the prince of the air. he That's the spirit working in the children of disobedience from the commands of Allah Hayyam. We can know when we're serving another Allah Hayyam or another spirit. It's shown in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and our minds. That helps us know when we're with Allah Hayyam or we're not. Now, we were enemies when we follow the lusts of our mind and our flesh, but Allah Hayyam has been gracious to reconcile us through Christ. Can you read Colossians 1 and 21, please? Uh, I got something on that. Okay. Um, when Paul said he only knoweth sin by the law, that's actually how we actually know if there's another spirit that's walking in us or an a, a idol that actually has place in us if we can't keep the law in certain areas. So that actually shows us, hey, I'm struggling in this area because there is an idol or another Alahim's um, law that is surpassing the law of Alahim in my body and in my flesh. It's good understanding to know that's something to pray about. Mm -hmm. you know, to ask for deliverance from it because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but spiritual right. wickedness. So... There's no hand for that understanding. Oh. And know, know that these things are going to come up. They're going to be areas of growth where you notice another law in your members, even as Paul spake of, that's worn against the law of your mind to keep the commands of Allah Hayyam. Remember, keep temperance, take it in stride, and continue growing in the faith because there's nothing that Allah Hayyam has given us that we can't bear. And he always makes a way out. So let's remember to cast our cares unto him and make supplication and continue putting the work in to get delivered. And let's read Colossians 1 and 21, please. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. That's great with what you said because you mentioned how when you notice, if I'm noticed I'm struggling in an area because there's another spirit that's warring against me, that's hindering me from the growth. That alone, to see it and understand it, that's growth in my mind because it's my mind against my body. It's to take it the right way to know Allah Hayyam's, he's reconciling me. He's helping my mind come out of the wicked works to understand that, hey, something else is wrong in here. There's something else I need to pray for and work to overcome. 
instead of being carnal minded and giving into it or giving up, you know? So let's be encouraged to overcome our former idolatries. First Corinthians 10, verse 13 and 14, please. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But Elohim is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. So know that Elohim isn't giving us more than we can bear. And let's not let any idol make us think that this is too much. This process or this journey or this calling is too much for us. Anytime that thought comes or that feeling or that feeling of overwhelmed comes, let's flee from idolatry. Because our Allah is faithful. He's going to make a way for us to escape. All right. Anything else, Zachwa? Um, yeah, definitely. Just like Brother Kosovo said, you know, just stay encouraged. Don't get overwhelmed or or frustrated or just trust the process. Um, allow Elohim to have dominion over your life and allow him to to move you and push you forward and just don't resist it. You know, um, take accountability for the things that he shows you that you've done wrong or that you are doing wrong, or something that may have place in you, so that you can actually um, see it and overcome it, or, or rid of it, or put forth the efforts to overcome it. You know? So definitely just take everything in stride and and be joyful, knowing that the accidents that befall us, we, we receive as good, knowing that nothing cometh but from Elohim. So just be of good cheer, and enjoy the process and just continue to examine and see yourself and grow. Amen. Amen. Ahaya, alahayam, be with you all. And we look forward to catch you on the next law class. All right. Tell them everybody. HRC, HRC, HRC. HRC, 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 Hebrew Readers, Hebrew Readers, Hebrew Readers Church.